Hey, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda in the 118 scale by Acme Trade Company. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the box here. On the front of the box we can see just some shots of the car as well as um, in the upper right some of the Hemi billboarding um, that's on the side of the car. If we go around the box we can see just some more shots of the car. On the sides, it shows some of the features that the car has, such as the 426 engine, detailed undercarriage, interior, um, serialized plate. Um, we can see that there's a total of 714 of this car produced. Some more shots of the car there. And then on the back is just the manufactured by Acme Trading Company and the licensed product there, made in China. Let's go ahead and take a look at the car. Here we have this beautiful B5 Hemi Cuda. As we can see, it has the billboarding on the side as well as the uh, body color match steel wheels. Uh, this is beautiful color blue. Um, the box definitely does not do it justice. Um, the box makes it seem like it's more of like a darker blue, uh, whereas this is a little bit more brighter, more of like a uh, sky blue on like a nice beautiful sunny day. So we're starting off with the front end of the car here, which looks incredible. The cheese grater style grill that the 1971 Cudas had um, has great depth to it. Um, it just looks really good. It looks authentic. It looks real. Acme definitely did a great job with that, as well as like the headlights and like the auxiliary like lights down here and like turn signals um, don't have uh, you know the studs in them that you would get from uh, models of less quality. So very, very happy with that. Um, another thing on here that I found interesting was um, on like the concept drawings for this, the uh, front bumper was chrome, and then uh, the product that we actually received, the front bumper is color match. So I found that interesting that was changed what we originally shown with the car uh, you know, to what we actually received. You can see that it does have the Plymouth badge on the front of the hood there which is in the correct spot it does have the hood pins uh, on it which these are pain in the butt they look great but it just makes me never want to open the engine bay of you know engine of my car because uh, putting them back in is a pain in the rear one thing to note is uh opening the hood is actually quite difficult on this car because the hood gaps are so incredibly tight that i uh, actually trying to open it without any opening tool or anything was quite difficult. But here we can see the beautifully detailed engine. Uh, you can see the shaker sticker up there on the shaker hood as well as you have the fender tag there. There's different safety labels around. Uh, so this is a pull, fully plumbed and wired engine. You can see all the spark plugs there as well as like the alternator on the top. So it's very very intricately detailed. You have the realistic hinges on the hood. Very nicely done engine bay. Very happy with this. Uh, it looks awesome. Inside of the shaker hood there we can see that it does say uh, Hemi Cuda um, in chrome lettering. Now then uh, let's go close the hood and make our way around the side of the vehicle. Here's the side of the car and we can see the uh, nice big white billboarding uh, for the Hemi on the side of the car. Um, those are Place nice and straight with the body lines. Better look here at the uh, body colored steel wheels with the chrome center caps. Um, now then these do have uh, the valve stems on the wheels and these are uh, Goodyear polyglass tires on the wheels. Uh, you can see the um, turn, signal, uh, turn signal or indicator lights on the front and rear of the vehicle and those are actual um, part of the body not just uh, decals. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the vehicle real quick. And then the uh, doors do open very nicely uh, to reveal the interior with the white seats and the black dash. Uh, you can see the seat belts there on the seats, which the seats do tilt forward, both the driver and passenger side. Uh, you can see the wood grain steering wheel as well as the pistol grip shifter back there. So we can get a better look at that, which actually we'll get a better look at that when we look in the passenger side of the vehicle. But we can see the gauge cluster back there um, looking nice with like the wood grain trim on that as well. Uh, definitely um, very 1970s there. 
Uh, now then, this model does have the carpeting and it does have the floor mat, which you can see down there in the driver's footwell. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat here. We tilt the driver's seat forward. We can look into the back, which has seat belts in the rear as well. Um, just the white bench seat in the back. Uh, you can see the hand crank for the uh, little quarter windows that do go up and down. Um, well, actually, on this model, they don't, but on the real car, they would. Um, so the that hand crank would operate those little quarter windows in the rear. Uh, if we go ahead and tilt the seat back, close the door. See the door closes nicely, uh, nice and flush, very small panel gaps there. Um, it doesn't snap shut or anything like that, or it doesn't, you know, stop sticking out a little bit. It just closes very nicely. Anyways, let's go ahead and make our way around the rear of the car. CUDA badging there on the uh, rear panel. Um, you can also see the little tiny Barracuda badge down there um, next to what would be the keyhole for the trunk. Uh, we can see you got the two separate uh, you got the tail lights or brake lights, um, and then you have the reverse lights there. Uh, now this does have the rectangular um, exhaust tips down there. It has the chrome bumper on the rear, which is interesting that it is a um, chrome bumper on the rear and a painted bumper on the front. Uh, anyways, uh, let's see the um, Georgia license plate with 426 CUDA. If we go ahead and open up the trunk. Forgot about the little tape piece there. Um, looking inside of the trunk, we can see it does have a trunk liner as well as the spare. Um, you got the jack there um, for the bumper jack. And then wow. taking a look here, we can see this is car uh, 223 of the 714 produced. So lower number you know, in the production run. And then on the top of the like underside of the trunk deck lid there, we can see safety decals or jacking, uh, jacking instructions of the car. Let's go ahead and close the trunk and make our way around the passenger side of the vehicle. Uh, not too much different on the passenger side of the vehicle from the driver's side. Um, the only main difference here really is uh, there is the radio antenna. Um, which does extend upwards a little bit, um, so it goes up and down just a little. Uh, not all the way down, that's about as far as it goes. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the interior from the passenger side of view. Here's a look at the uh, passenger side of the vehicle. Um, you can see this does have the seat that does tilt forward on this side as well. Um, this one goes forward a bit more, uh, so it doesn't have the steering wheel in the way. Um, these seats uh, do not slide forward and backwards like some models they are stationary. You can see the Barracuda badge on the dash there as well. Um, now then this model does have the uh, glove box that does open. Um, a little hard to see there with the black interior. Um, so it does have the glove box that does open. Um, opens nicely, just closes back up. I almost did forget to mention that the uh, passenger side door um, does have a decal on the inside trim part of it. Another small difference is the small Chrysler Pentastar emblem on the bottom of the front fender. On the uh, underside of the vehicle here we can see the underside of the uh, engine painted in the hemi orange there as well as the transmission. Um, you can see the steering wheels do tilt. They're a little bit stiff. They do turn this way but turning the other way um, they do not turn uh, very well that way so they really only turn to the left, not very much to the right. Um, we can see the you know, nice paint overspray there, uh, make it realistic. Uh, let's see, these four holes here, um, those are where the uh, car is mounted into the box, so it has those uh, black um, plastic twist screws um, that you would unscrew to release the, pack, uh, the car from the packaging. Um, now that we can see this has dual exhausts going back, to the exhaust tips that exit through the bumper. Overall, I'm super happy with the quality of this model. Um, Acme did a great job with this one. Uh, just their details and the quality they put into it. Um, there's no glaring mistakes on it. Uh, 
the you know glass is clear. There isn't distortion going through it. It looks great. You know, there's no paint bubbling or chips or just other weird paint marks that models sometimes come with. The billboards on both sides of the vehicle are um, nicely applied and they line up with the body lines as they should. Um, no issues uh, with those. Um, I know that can be a common issue sometimes when there's uh, body decals applied. Um, one thing I did notice with those is the passenger side one, uh, sometimes depending on how you close the door, uh, lines up a little off, but if you just give the door a little wiggle, um, it does line right up. Overall, I'm uh, very happy with the opening and closings of the doors, trunk, and hood. Um, all of them open and shut nicely. Uh, the panel gaps on them are all very nice and tight. They're all you know, trying to make it look good, um, especially with like the caliber of this model. Um, you know, you definitely don't want large panel gaps. It would just be um, kind of hideous, especially considering, you know, when you're paying for an Acme model, you don't want that kind of stuff. This has been my review and thoughts on the 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda in 118 scale by Acme Trading Company. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content. Thanks! Thank you.